Now, most people found this a bit tricky, mainly because of the involved mention of the word thrust in the rod. Now, just to be clear, thrust is, is the opposite of tension. Tension is basically when it's pulled away, so we follow the direction of the, of the string. Whereas thrust in the rod is when the rod itself compresses. And to understand the visual demonstration, I'm going to post a screen of an information from the um, standard M1 textbook that you probably get in school. For example, I'm just going to look at this information here. It says if an object is being pushed along using a light rod, the force acting on the object is called the thrust or compression in the rod. So have a look carefully. If it's acting towards it, here is the thrust. Now let's get back to the exercise. Now let's. Now I think we can do this. Okay, here we go. So here is more space so we can actually solve this. So first things first, redraw the system here. So we should have P and Q down here. P and Q. So, and just to put the weights back in, we know that at particle P, there is a mass of 0.5 kg, so 0.5 G. And at Q, there is a mass of 0.75 kilograms, so 0.75 G. We also know that the, that the system is accelerated vertically upwards. So let's do the acceleration sign pointing upwards. And there's a force of uh, 50 newtons applied, a vertical force of 50 newtons applied at P, uh, Q, sorry. So it would be here, 50 newtons. And of course, we just always, always work in newtons, yeah? Now, we need to find the thrust in a rod. And, we, and just in case we forgot, we, pre we previously mentioned that the thrust is kind of works like a compression or a push. So it's like a push at Q, meaning that there is going to be some form of compression involved at P. So we could say that there is a thrust like here, like pushing it, it will be thrust of T here, and another thrust, a compression resulting at T here as well. And that's it. This is how the system should kind of look like. Now, the question is, we have to now resolve it to get the definite answer. So let's go ahead and resolve firstly at P, yeah? So I'm going to use red. So I'm going to work in this top left corner. So resolving at P, we can say that resolving towards the direction of the acceleration, so upwards, we're going to have firstly, where well, there's no positive value, so it'll be minus 0.5G minus T. And this is going to equal to mass times acceleration, so 0 0.5 times A. Now at Q, same thing applies. So Q has got two positive values. We've got 15 plus T. So you can say 15, and I'll put plus T so it matches here. And the downward, the downward force would be minus 0 0.5G. So, so it's probably best to just match them because the point is we're going to probably use simultaneous equations to find the values of A, then eventually T. And yeah, this is going to equal 0.75A. That's it guys, so this is where we are right now. So now all we have to do is resolve this. So what I would do, firstly I, I want to eliminate T. To do that, what we could do, we could just um, subtract these forces. Actually no, we can add these forces because minus T plus T cancels out and becomes zero. So let's go ahead and add these. So nothing at 15 is 15, minus 0.5 grams a G, minus 0.75 G, so no grams, is 1.5. 25 g's it's a gravitational force and this would be zero now adding the two accelerations you should get 1.25 a and finally making a the subject dividing 1.25 across you should get exactly 2.2 meters per second square and that's it we've done acceleration and finally to find tension well pick any of these two and you should get a result so i'm going to pick um, the first equation because it looks easy to work with so we can say firstly, plusing 0.5g across, we should have minus t equals 0.5a plus 0.5g. Now notice how this value is actually negative. It does look quite weird, but this is going to give you 6 newtons. And technically, t itself will give you minus 6. But that's fine, because the way we're looking at it, we're looking at it towards um, a negative, ten, negative thrust. And at the end of the day, the magnitude will always be positive. Because if we're pointing upwards, this should technically be negative, which makes sense. Either way, it doesn't make the case. So the final result would therefore be, ten, the thrust would therefore be plus 6 newtons. Because there has to be a positive value. And that's it guys. I hope this helped. And let me know if you've got any further suggestions to this question. I would like to hear it. But otherwise, let's move on to the next one.